So yeah, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, this is a, our how to build a cross-border relationships as a wholesale host, brand uh, webinar as part of our US uh, shopping event that's happening this week. We are also extending the shopping event to tomorrow. So please do check it out uh, at curate.com. Uh, just a bit about your hosts, first of all. So uh, we have my colleague, uh, Lauren Thompson, who's gonna be joining us in the panel as a host. Uh, Lauren, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think it's I think it's been a month today since I joined Crewway actually. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty new here, but um, yeah, I I work on copy, um, blogs, social, um, ads, you name it. So yeah, really in on the content side of things, and lovely to um, be here today to chat to some makers and. Yeah. Amazing. Learn from, so learn from your experiences. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm Jerome. I'm also part of the marketing team here at Crewate. Uh, we work directly with uh, brands uh, in our community. Um, and it's great to have a few of them here joining us for this uh, incredible conversation. Uh, so just uh, before we just get started, a quick uh, intro about Crewate for those of you who don't know. Uh, Crewate is a wholesale marketplace. Uh, we aim to connect uh, wholesale brands with uh, retailers that buy in wholesale and uh, help these independent businesses uh, scale globally by staying local. And that's our whole mission and what we try to, to do here. Um, just a brief agenda of, what, uh, of how the conversation is going to go today. Uh, we're going to start with some introductions from each of our uh, panelists, uh, they're going to introduce themselves and, the, and their brands, uh, after which we're going to go through uh, four different uh, conversational themes. So first of all, the motivation to scale. Uh, second of all, the challenges of scaling. Uh, thirdly, uh, the right connections to build, be it personal or professional, to make sure that you build sustainably for the long term. And fourth, uh, the power of community in doing so, uh, both from an aspect of uh, the social community as well as a uh, technological community like Create tries to uh, tries to help uh, entrepreneurs with. So without further ado, um, please, Jennifer, why don't you introduce Evolve and yourself? Hi, um, my name is Jennifer Tice and I am the founder and uh, formulator behind all of the products on Evolve Botanica. Um, we actually have been around for over 20 years, um, but we rebranded uh, about two years ago, right before COVID. Um, and really a lot of the, the changes um, and reasons for that is that the company itself had changed um, pretty significantly from the time that I started it under our previous branding. Um, but further back behind that, as you can see sort of in the bio there, um, it began a very, very long time ago with my grandmère, um, who uh, taught us um, about plants, about, you know, different poultices, um, how to make soaps, um, really sort of going back to um, the roots and going back to Mother Nature and, um, you know, the, the best things about, you know, the plants that we have. And so it really started back then. Um, whether I was stealing plants or strawberries or different things from mom's garden to do face masks or different things like that. Um, it really started from the very beginning. Um, I'm a chemist by trade. Um, the, probably one of the last jobs I did when I left um, the corporate world, um, I dealt with hydrogels for MTP and spinal implants. Um, so really, um, the, the chemistry side of things, um, truly that's what skincare is, it's chemistry. And um, Evolve gave me the ability to explore both the um, modern technology side as well as the botanical and the plant side of things, the natural homeopathy. Um, so this is a really great joining and merging of both. So like I said, we've been around for over 20 years. Um, we manufacture um, not just our brand, but we are also a contract manufacturer as well. Um, so really the Evolve Botanical side is our smallest production side, and that's really more for our favorite products, our preferred products, and what really fits with us. Um, so we really have a lot of experience um, with the production, and especially with international as well, 
Um, two of our biggest clients are in Canada. So we do, we do have experience with cross borders already um, prior to coming around with Creo8. And um, once we found out and heard about Creo8, it was a really great way for us to um, expand on our borders and our expansion project um, with our own branding as well. So that's sort of where we started and where we began and some of the changes that came along with the company and where we are now. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for this intro. Next up, uh, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself and Lizouche? Pleasure. So I'm Alex. Hi, nice to see you all. Um, I am, um, as you can hear, not American, but I'm in California. And um, I've been here for five years. I joined up with Lizzie um, as soon as I got here. Um, you were talking about connections, personal connections. Um, I was introduced to her, came to work for her very quickly after. Lizzie started the business nine years ago. She's a kindergarten teacher, was a kindergarten teacher. And she um, couldn't find skincare that wasn't expensive, that was natural and really natural, not American natural. And um, so she started making soaps very quickly. Um, friends and family asked for some soaps. Someone asked for a lip balm. She researched, she went, she looked, she found, she made. Um, and today we have 70 SKUs of different products in different scents. We are 100% natural. We are women only um, in our business here in California. Um, we um, started small, started in the kitchen, making, mixing, melting, jarring, labeling. Um, and uh, today we're in a big warehouse. We have 10 full-timers and quite a few students that come and work for us um, in the summers and in the school holidays in between. Um, we sell on a few platforms. We sell on our own website. We sell on Etsy. We sell on Amazon. All those are to the private customers, but we also do wholesale and um, we love to ship to the UK. I have a lot of connections in the UK. Um, we work in Canada and France, Spain, um, two clients in Puerto Rico. So we're, we're sort of going global. Um, yeah, it's a journey. It's not easy. We started with two shops that knocked on our door and asked if we would sell to them. Today we have over 5,000 brick and mortars that buy from us um, on a regular basis. So it's a learning curve for sure. And, you know, we, we all have um, things to share and things to learn and a lot of things like, oh, please don't do that. Don't go down that route <laughs> because we've done it and it's not good. Um, yeah, the pandemic was definitely a good learning curve about raw materials, supply chains, um, sourcing from within the US, sourcing from China, India, Vietnam, like how far do you go? Um, and again, because we're the makers, very similar to Jennifer, we have control of what we can make, how we mix, what we do. Um, I know there's a lot of makers that just buy a product and then just brand them differently, which is great because we also supply white label, but when you're the actual maker of your own brand, it, it's different and you have total control um, over uh, customization, changing scents, changing colors. Um, so that's, that's great and it's a great advantage. Although today it's very fashionable to do all these uh, drop shipping. So there's no inventory, you don't need a warehouse. Um, you can work from your kitchen and just move things from someone else's point A to someone else's point B and cut your... So there is something to say for that whole world. 
but um, there's nothing like scraping the tops of lip balms and then labeling them and the satisfaction that you get when a customer says like, oh my God, your lip balm is the best lip balm I've ever had. Like there's so much to do, like there's so much satisfaction that I think more so than if you've just pressed of a button and bought from someone else and sold to someone else and just drop shipped. So um, as you can hear, I'm super passionate about our business. Um, you know, it's my life, it's my baby, my kids have all grown up. So it's definitely um, something to keep me very, very busy. <laughs> Uh, not a day goes by without a crisis and I'm sure anyone on this panel and anyone that's listening to us knows like how that is you wake up you dread opening your email or your whatsapp to see what's waiting for me today um, yeah so I'm here to answer any any questions and talk to whoever oh amazing Alex no thank you so much for that I think it's it's something that all of you have in common is the customer centricity, the connection of purpose that what you're building, uh, uh, that you have with the customer itself, that, of what you're selling. So, so that's, I think, is the first recipe to success. Like you need to be your own customer. So really, really cool. Um, yeah, Alexa, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Who? I think you're mute. I think you're muted. There you go. There we go. Hello, I'm Alexa Martha, and I'm the uh, owner and designer behind Alexa Martha Designs. And I um, fell in love with making jewelry when I was four years old, basically, because my dad, he was a jewelry designer and he had his own little shop at home. And um, I often went into his shop and just looked over his shoulder and watched him work. And this uh, must have installed in me such a fire that I just wanted to do what he did, you know? So by the time my fourth birthday came around, he uh, gave me a little coping saw and, he, and I had a little uh, workbench by his uh, next to him and he showed me how to uh, saw out little uh, wooden um, Disney figures and filing them after his and, and that's how I started you know and I had my little uh, place and then later on when I was 16 he became my mentor as an uh, I did an apprenticeship a dual apprenticeship I went to school for three and a half years for two days and then in the rest of the week, I spend in his company learning the practical trade of being a jewelry designer and um, a goldsmith. And, um, in, and while I was uh, learning with him, I designed um, jewelry lines for him and with him. And my dad, he was one of those, uh, he always wanted to be the best and he wanted to work with the best material. So I worked a lot with 18 karat gold, with diamonds, gemstones, and all this stuff, you know. And I graduated in, um, eight, in 82. And, um, and then scroll forward, I worked with my, ten, my dad for about 10 years altogether. And um, when I met my husband, he was in, that was in Germany, by the way. I'm German. I was born in Germany and I met my husband in Germany. And then uh, we fell in love, got married, had a kid, and we ended up in Montana and scrolled down another to 2006. And that's when I uh, fell back into it. Into I started with beading. I brought my tools from Germany and everything, and um, including with six suitcases and a 14 months year old son and my husband we started in 1996 over here in montana and well then and school school forward to 2006 i started a uh, beading and uh, um, little uh, necklaces and stuff so what i could find uh, in the craft stores and um 
And then I started ordering material online, like sterling silver and stuff, you know, after I had equated myself with, oh my God, how does a computer work and all that, you know? And, and, and so it, it went from there. I started with craft shows. I went to a bazillion of craft shows and on craft shows, people started asking me, well, do you have a website? So in 2008, I built my first website under bejewels.biz. And um, that was a total flop, you know, and I was thinking then, oh gosh, why am I doing this? Why am I not giving up? Why am I not just getting, getting an eight to five job and be done with it, you know? No, that wasn't me because my passion lies deeper than that. Um, my passion says my passion has a purpose and, and that purpose needed to come to the light, you know? So scroll forward after a lot of trials and mishaps and being schemed and scammed and to uh, 2015 is when I renamed Lexi Butler Designs. And in, two, in 2020, I renamed it again to Alexa Martha Designs and that is when it took off. People just started finding me. I, I was so, um, you can almost say done by the point I was, I arrived at where I wanted to arrive, you know, because for the longest time, I did not even wanted to go with Alexa because I hated my name from the past and stuff, you know, so that's why I went with Lexi and Lexi just didn't take off, you know, so and then when I went with Alexa Martha Designs, which is my birth name, it took off because maybe it has a different sound to it or something, you know, but it took off and people started finding me and, and, and they started finding my jewelry and, and they said, we want to sell your jewelry, you know, and then Fair approached me, Tundra approached me. And I tell you the truth, I did not reach out to anyone because I just did not know. I'm almost 60 years old, you know, I just did not know how to do all that stuff. You know, all I know is how to make jewelry. And that's what I want to do, really, you know. But now, school all those years forward, now here I am. I am on so many wholesale sites now. Create is just one of them. And I am the drop shipper also, a drop ship supplier. And I also have a retail store. I'm also now in physical stores. In three physical stores, I'm... I have two in uh, Globe, Arizona, and she um, found me on Facebook, where I have a presence as well. And, um, and she contacted me and said, I love your jewelry. Can you please send your jewelry my way so I can sell it? You know, so I did this. And then just a couple of streets down from her is... Uh, a couple of houses down from her is the pickle barrel and they found me on fair through her you know so and it just goes i think when you have a, it says a web and then eventually find you yes yeah you, know, you can mm -hmm. control after a point where expansion takes you it, it yeah. just takes off and it, it goes its own direction Absolutely. yes and you and then create found me you know mm -hmm. and then i and then i received the email we want to make you vip i say what i didn't do anything <laughs> thank you so you much know. alexa thank you so, so much yes oh amazing um great now let's get started in the first theme of today i think we're already touching a few points but it would just be great to like dive a bit deeper into what exactly drove you guys to uh look beyond your neighborhood and really think about your business as a as a global brand right um so uh, why don't you start this off, Jennifer? Oh, I think you might be mute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, so we really, um, I wouldn't say we necessarily made a decision, a conscious decision to expand our business um, cross borders. Um, it really sort of fell into our lap a little bit um, organically, um, just from the production side of things. Um, really, like I said, as the contract manufacturing, that's sort of how it expanded us um, to begin with. 
And um, it really started as we expanded into Canada and we're like, oh, okay, well, we never thought about, you know, working with businesses across the borders because we always thought, oh, it's going to be too hard. You know, we have all of these, you know, border issues that you have to learn and, you know, how do we register with that Ministry of Health and register with that. So that was really sort of um, what started it and why we didn't, in, you know, originally intend on pursuing it. But as we started working with our Canadian customer, um, we really saw, oh, okay, well, this isn't as hard as we thought it was. Um, so we saw how we did that and um, we're like, oh, okay, well, we can do this ourselves. So that's, you know, as we started expanding out into it that way, and then as we had a customer in the UK approach us, they're like, oh, we love your products. I saw them, you know, at the America's Mart in Atlanta. Um, so that's really sort of how it sort of started organically. We never intentionally thought to expand. Um, it really came as customers found us. And we're like, okay, well, now we have to figure out how to work here. Now we have to figure out how to work there. And that's really how it started. Amazing. No, thank you for that. Uh, Alex, uh, would you like to jump in? Yeah, pleasure. So again, very similar to Jennifer. I mean, amazing that, um, again, we started just us, just for people that were near us. One of our contacts said, like, why don't you open a shop on Etsy? We thought, you know what? Great. hundred dollars a month on advertising. Wonderful. Um, and that's how we started. And again, the same with Jennifer, the same with Alexa. People are craving to find new, different, um, definitely shops. I'm, I'm surprised that Alexa like sells like two doors down from each other. Those are her two physical shops. And, um, and it is like that because people see your product like the product. And they want they want to find it locally they want to know how easily it is to get it um you know again we built up after etsy we built our website after that we were approached by um subscription boxes that wanted to put our stuff in their stuff so it's like it is a wheel it's not you can't open a business and the next day make your first million and be on Etsy and on Tundra and on Fair and on Create and, 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 and VIP here and VIP there. It doesn't happen overnight. It's very hard work. Um, and it's usually a team, even if it's just, I mean, me and Lizzie just started a team of two. Um, today we have marketing teams and we have someone doing Google Analytics for us and we have someone else doing Clavio for us. You know, like you can't, you really, really can't just do everything on your own um, if you want to grow. We have um, people that we know and actually we just poached someone over to come and work for us um, that didn't want to grow. She was very happy. She was doing uh, customization um, products like water bottles with names and pins and her business was great. And we kept saying, no, you can do more. You can do wholesale. Come, I'll help you. I'll help you. And she was like, no, I don't want to grow. I'm very happy with my couple of thousand dollars a month. I don't need more. I don't want more. I don't want to have a team. I don't want to have a warehouse. So it also depends when you start, what you're looking for and do you want? I mean, having a business this big, and I'm sure Jennifer and Alexa will agree with me, is a headache. Is a headache. Mm -hmm. You have to support your workers. And we, because we're women only and we try and support all ways of life, we have single moms, we have army vets, we have... Uh, retired people we have students and we can't just say hey we haven't got any work today goodbye see you next week or you know come and work 24 7 because we have a big order for amazon to do you can't they we try and treat them like we would our children so like it's it's or our grandparents you know like it's that kind of scale and you care about them and I don't sleep at night when someone tells me oh my child's ill and like maybe I won't come into work tomorrow fine don't come into work but tell me about your kids are they okay you know like so it's um to grow yes you see the dollars at the end not always you see the dollars at the end but it's also a big 
it, it's something you need to be willing to go into and sometimes it goes like with us the pandemic like was if if our curve was this way the whole time the pandemic made our curve really really steep um and and you know for good and bad we were working around the clock there was no raw materials we were like running around dollar trees looking for epsom salts you know like it was it it was a nightmare so there is good and bad in growing and my best advice is to expand slowly don't jump over what you what you can do don't say like hey you know i have this like little um, golden egg on the side i'm going to put all that golden egg into my business and i want to have a warehouse and i want to grow and i want to be big and i want to do a campaign and i want to do this <laughs> slow down breathe be better baby steps that are more stable than to run up because we also know a lot of people that have crashed down love it love the comments i think it's even something that we rarely think about sometimes like expansion begins with things that we don't see it's not necessarily our businesses our employees it's ourselves taking care of both beforehand i think that that's phenomenal point for everyone listening um and absolutely uh, i think if you can't if you can nail uh, your neighborhood first, why would you expand, right? You need to think through uh, your initial customers, make sure, sure you're serving them uh, in the best way you can. And then of course you need to share that, the love, your passion, your mission with the rest of the world. You know? So super, super nice to hear that. Um, and Alex, I think we touched a bit uh, on, uh, on expansion with your introduction, but if you could maybe dive into that point of the right fit, how did you know once they came to you uh, that it was the right fit for Alexa Marta Designs? Uh, why did you say yes? Um, before I enter this, I want to mention something really important that really helped me make that step. Because um, I totally disagree, by the way, what Alex said. I do everything by myself. I have only my husband that helps me absolute every once in a while with marketing and the wording because I'm German, I'm bilingual and I mess this up all the time. And he looks at us here, what did you write again? Okay, we have to help you with that. So they help, this is what he helps me with. But everything else I do myself because my husband, he has his own stuff. So, but when I design jewelry from the get go, I kept in mind that one day I might want to sell wholesale. So as a jewelry designer, what's important to me is to make a profit when I design. I don't want to just work on designs for hours and hours and hours and hours. And then it takes me hours and hours and hours and hours to make it and then sell it. I get no money. I make no money. I make no profit. So with this in mind, I designed my jewelry. I designed the jewelry so that it takes me a certain amount of time to finish the piece because time is money in the business, especially when you're a maker. And, um, and that's how I do my jewelry. That's how I design my jewelry accordingly to this. And so I have no problem when I get big orders just to whip them out. So, and, um, and yeah. over time from when I started, when I, um, I started in, I started getting serious in 2015 and that's where I started, um, people started reaching out to me and stuff. And, um, and I started systematically um, going on, uh, they onboarded me on their sites. So I, I was on Fair and I on Tunda and, and on um, Bootsy and on um, and all kinds of other stuff and and um, and now the orders come in because I am established. You know what I mean? I've been there for years. They've been marketing me for years, and now the orders come in on a regular basis. I get orders every day now. I get orders on my website. I get orders from Modelist, which is a dropship. Uh, marketplace I get I get uh, I have several retailers there order for me and 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 um, Tundra I get a lot of orders from fair I get orders from and stuff you know 
and you guys, you know, so. Definitely, definitely. I think an interesting point that you mentioned is, yeah, it's, it needs to be authentic to you. So for some people, it works to go quicker. Other people, you need to build a team. It doesn't, I think there's no right answer when it comes to entrepreneurship yeah. expansion. Yeah. It, it um, totally depends on what you do, how you do it, and in the quantity you want to do it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, now we're just moving on to our second theme, which is focusing a bit more on the challenges of expansion. Uh, so, uh, Lauren, why don't you go ahead and take this? Sure. So, um, the next couple of questions um, mostly going to be directed at um, Jennifer and, and Alec, but by all means, Alexa as well, if you have anything to add here. Um, from your experience, absolutely uh, feel free to jump in. So um, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced in the process of expanding your business? And were there any things that people kind of didn't tell you? Um, and that <laughs> how, how, did, um, how did it look mentally versus in real life, the process, you know, expectations versus reality? So um, Jennifer, would you like to go first? Yeah, um, I would say um, for us specifically, um, and Alex, I know she's familiar with this too, um, skincare growing across borders is something that is a little different um, because there are so many specific regulations um, with how each country handles what is accepted, what products are allowed, how you have to have your labels done. Um, you know, your weight in ounces down to actually the very size of the font and um, the readability and, you know, going into Canada, for example, um, your ingredient labels must be in English and in French. Um, so, you know, every country has its own very specific rules for skincare. And it's not like sending, um, you know, printed t-shirts where it's just a commodity. It's just something like that. Um, skincare is a whole different beast and there are definitely a lot of issues with each one. And you really have to learn um, what those very specific retail um, challenges are for both the retailer and for you as you're exporting that product into those different countries. Um, Italy, for example, is one country where um, the products themselves have to be registered with the Ministry of Health that's there. And that's a pretty hefty price for something um, to, to be done. And oftentimes for, um, you know, customers like on Fair, for example, who are ordering from different countries because they really pushed um, you know, here's all of this money if you order from these U.S. buyers. So all of these international countries were like, oh, this is awesome. Let me get these products. And then um, the product ships to them and then they're duded, uh, you know, dinged with these, okay, you've got to pay X amount of money in just the registration fees and the product. That's not even like the taxes and things like that. And it's pretty cost prohibitive in some countries that, and um, unfortunately, it's, it's definitely a learning curve. So it's also a learning curve that you have to educate your buyers on as well. So it's not just on you understanding what you need to do. It's you have to understand and educate your buyers on the processes they have to go through when they're importing skincare products into their country too. So it's definitely a challenge and you almost have to have a team of people to decipher all of those regulations um, because it's something that can take a, a quite a bit of time. So that's definitely the biggest challenge with our industry and the skincare side of things. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really confusing. And it is. I, I can I can only imagine just when you're when you're facing that initially. It, obviously really exciting expanding but then suddenly being like okay wow I have yeah. to get to grips with all these new rules that I maybe didn't even know existed yeah, yeah. we have um, we have a team member Ramya that's actually right next to me and all she does is communicate <laughs> between the different countries our lab that's in Turkey the different Amazon people that need different things because every single country is different every single country and there's no like we were like oh, okay we'll just go into the eu countries no that doesn't happen <laughs> it's like every single country needs something else so like okay great 
like if I could do it all myself, but I have Ramya sitting here every day, all day with tables and tables and tables of which country and which lab and which, what he wants and no, the font you were talking about, Jennifer, the fonts. Oh my God, like, it doesn't matter. It's a font. No, it has to be this millimeters and that ounces. And it, it's, it's a nightmare. And it's a decision to do like, okay, is the US big enough for us? And it is, and there's enough. Or do we want to go? And again, with FAIR, we had orders come in and they were like, hey, yeah, I'm getting free product. No, it's not free because you have to pay the duties and the taxes and register them and know what you're doing and ask to, for them to be sold. And then we have to do It's Sometimes it's, it is not worth it. Sometimes you have to decide, okay, we're happy with the US or US, Canada, Mexico, you know, like, in Canada translate everything to French you know and you have to have French and English and it can't just be a sticker over a sticker it has to be on each product not a, I mean there's a lot but again when you grow and you have a team and I'm sure Jennifer doesn't do it all herself and you have a team then you have a person I mean we onboarded Ramya I think four or five months ago only just to do that because I can't I can't do everything in order to be successful on fair and we get a lot of orders on fair in order to be successful you have to work on it every day you have to do email marketing you have to change pictures same with your platform we have to onboard more customers we have to change the pictures we have to add products now I only have 70 SKUs but those 70 SKUs into gift boxes can be thousands of SKUs it takes hours and hours and hours to onboard. It hours. I don't know how Alexa does it on all those platforms, but it's hours and hours. And everyone wants the pictures on their sizes and they want them square. No, they want them rectangle. No, they want white background. No, they want atmosphere. No, they want. So it's great to grow, but you do like, you need to know where you're growing to. And have you got the support to grow that much? Um, and, you know, like we have a photographer and we have a design team because it, we can't do everything. I can't sit here taking pictures of all my new products, putting them in different sets, making TikToks, making films, making social. Um, TikTok needs different timing than Facebook uh, films. You know, like this website will only let me do five megabytes of a video. No, it needs to be 16 megabytes of a video. So all these things, if I had to do all of that, or even if it was just me and Lizzie, we would, we would be maybe with less skews or I don't know where we would be, but, but yeah, so you do, it is a big challenge and you need to find the right people. I think our biggest challenge is to find the human beings because it, it's hard to find someone that's loyal to you and cares about the business as much as me and Lizzie care about the business because it's our baby. Think about finding a babysitter for your children, you know, or a dog sitter for your dog. It, you know, and people have come and we thought it was a right fit because on paper it's good. And after a couple of months, we say like, you know what, but then we're already involved emotionally. So how do you let that person go? You know, there's that to me, that's like, apart from everything else, that's, that's a technical challenge, maybe for me, the personal challenge of finding the right people to fit, the right combination of people, no drama, like you come, you work, yes, you have lunch together and you chit chat and everyone's in everyone's life. We're here eight to 10 hours every single day. Um, so it has to be someone that's pleasant for you to be around, it has to be someone that puts into the business or give something extra into the business, not just I'm coming, tell me what to do, I'll do it at my own time. No, time is money. Alexa was talking about how she calculates every, every jewelry that she makes, every bracelet, every earring. 
same here. Every box that I make, every product that I make, I make a body oil. I know exactly how long it needs to take to put a sticker on, how long it takes to fill it, how long it takes to put it in a plastic bubble bag. I have to. And we've had people that were very nice, but they're too slow. And instead of it costing me a dollar, it's costing me two dollars. So that's nothing, two dollars. I spend that on a coffee in the morning. But when you're doing thousands and millions of a product, each dollar, each 10 cents, each four cents is important. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It uh, sounds like a labor of love, really. Um, truly. <laughs> I think it has to be in order to be, to be where we are. I think all yeah. are, all of us on this panel, not just the panel, but all the people that are listening in, if there wasn't love, we wouldn't be here because it, it definitely isn't, it's not a, a day job. You go at nine, you finish at five, you put your pen down, you go and have a drink in the bar, you go out with your girlfriend. It's really not like that. It's not that kind of life. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure there's lots of people who who perhaps it has it started as a side hustle for, but then when it when it begins growing and snowballing, as you guys have said, it, it's 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 its own beast. So um, yeah, um, Alexa, did you have anything to add sure. in that question in terms of yes. the challenge? Um, I have uh, two hundred and thirty SKUs right now. <laughs> <laughs> And there's only more coming because I can't stop designing. So what do I do? Well, um, I don't know. Sometimes I discontinue products and and uh, just you know use them. When I see they don't sell, I'm just do a sell, do a sale, and call them uh, one time onlys or one of a kinds. And I do an Etsy sale in my Etsy store. You know, I do it and do it there. I don't do it on my website, but I wanted to put a plug in if I could. Could I could I put a plug in? Because um, I'm on Shopify and I really love Shopify. They have an awesome app store, which which can make your life so much easier. Automate your emails and everything you need to do from A to Z. And that's what I do. I do what I want to do. And then when I don't want to do, I leave the house and I go hot rodding. And that's life, you know? And it's just, I'm an empty nest and I'll say, why should I have all that stress on my head? You know, I mean, I raised my kids. I put two beautiful children out there who live on their own now, making their life. I'm happy with this. I have two, two grandchildren, you know, who come to visit me, who love their Oma. And um, I want to have fun in life at this time of my life. You know, I don't care if I get a sale today, I get one tomorrow or the day after that, you know, it's always enough money, you know, and it's not the money for me, it's the passion why I have to do it. It's Absolutely. the passion. And yeah, as Alex said, I think if, if the passion's not there, it's not going to happen, is it? Um, not the money, so, yeah. Yeah. The money is a side product. Seriously. Because my husband, he works, you know, and like I say, I'm an empty nester. So I get to do what I get to do, just like in a bigger scale now. So, mm. but I'm not going to go, when I want to say no, I'm going to say no. Yeah. You know, I'm going to leave me that freedom and I'm going to tell everybody too. I'm going to take a look at it. If I like it, I will join. If I don't, I won't. And I won't, and it won't hurt me in the least, you know? So. Cool. So, Joelle, should we move on to the next question then for this theme? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I know that, yeah, we have already touched on, on this somewhat um, and um, I'm sure it will, it, it differs for everyone, but yeah, if you just wanted to kind of um, go into what your team looks like, I know, um, Alex, you mentioned that you've got maybe about 10 people, 10 full-time staff, Jennifer, like 
what's what's your setup like who you know how how is what's going on behind the scenes at Evolve Botanica? So um, I would say behind the scenes, um, we're actually pretty lean. Um, it is um, myself, I oversee most of the higher end cosmetic production, um, as well as I, I still get in there and get my hands dirty because I, you know, I still love the process itself and uh, I can't get out of that side of it because chemistry is what makes me excited. Um, but uh, trying to think of how many people we have back there now, we've got about four or five people on production, um, four of which are part, um, sorry, full-time and the other, we've got one or two floaters that come in and they do the finished work on the product, um, whether that's the labeling, the impulse sealing, um, all the vacuum seals on the products themselves, um, just really down to the fine minutia stuff. So we've got two part-timers who come in and do that. Um, then I actually have my son um, who sort of grew up basically with the company. Um, I was pregnant with him when I started the company and now he works for me full time while he's going to school. Um, but he oversees the shipping side of things. So he handles the shipping and the wholesaler, the, sorry, the wholesale side of it, as far as the making sure everything goes out, um, overseeing our pickers and our packers. And then we've got um, three or four um, part-timers who come in and do the picking and packing. Um, and then we have some of our sales reps too. We've got a team of about seven or eight sales reps that are out there that do um, our wholesale stuff and do our store visits and things like that with our retailers. So um, we've got a pretty healthy team, um, but um, we can produce and put out a lot of our stuff um, pretty quickly with a small team that we have. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of how we've grown. Um, Coming from a lab background, um, definitely um, practicing uh, good manufacturing practices from the start um, versus having to sort of go back and fix things from the beginning. Um, uh, somewhat, again, lab side, um, a little bit of a clean freak there. So making sure <laughs> um, our stuff is basically um, lab quality and um, we've got separate areas isolated for different product production lines. Um, so we've got a really great team. And uh, like Alex said, um, you've got to really make sure that you like the people that you hire and that work with you um, because you're spending a lot of time with those people. So um, you, the, the people are definitely the biggest part of what we do. And um, I definitely say it's, it's family, um, 100%. Um, me a little bit more literally than maybe some others, but um, yes, yeah, definitely the team for sure. It's amazing that you've got your son involved as well. It's um, yeah. like the the amount that he'll be learning and that, you know, and it's it's like Alexa growing up watching her dad making the jewellery, you know, it's yeah. could could inspire its own its own thing. And that's that's amazing. And what you were saying about coming from like a lab background, I mean, what a foundation to have. It means you're gonna have really great, yeah. you know, the standard is very high, which is super important. For, for what you're doing. Um, I, I do I do miss some of the, the really great equipment that we had in the lab sometimes. Um, having access <laughs> to a mass spec machine um, was a lot of fun. So I do I do really miss those big toys. I bet. Um, but it, it, it's still um, it's still a lot of fun and we love what we do. Sure. Can I, yeah I was going to say, say something can I can I say something uh, absolutely for those who don't have a team for those who do work alone. Yeah, definitely. Organize, you know, I organize my time. I have my designer days where I'm just in the shop and have fun. And then I have my bookkeeping days where I'm just at the front of the computer and do my stuff in front of the computer. Even so, I want to be in a shop and work there. You have to have the self-discipline to do that. Absolutely. And and there, there'll, there'll almost certainly be people watching who 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 do run their businesses alone and that's really helpful I think um you know there's for, for both whether you're working with a team or on your own you you need to have a structure and you need to find a routine that works for you right um, and another thing don't stress yourself out when you get and when you get multiple orders you put them orders in queue you do some of the orders today you do some of the orders tomorrow you put on your website I have an extraordinary amount of orders coming in right now I need a little bit more process time that's what I do you know usually it's three to seven days for me 
Mm. And it works fine, you know. Some demand one day, some demand two days, like very shop. It's like 24 hours until you have to ship, you know. Mm. But then I have those, uh, uh, the ones that I sell a lot, I do have them stock. And when I, you know, have days where I have uh, hours to spare, I work in stock. So when those orders come in for the best sellers, I just get them, pack them up and ship them out. Definitely. And you'll have to keep all those kind of timings in mind for, yeah, for yeah. each platform and everything. And yeah, right. it'll require a lot of a lot of yeah. self-discipline. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's all it's all possible if you have to do it that way, you know. Definitely. Alex, do you have anything more to say on your team? I think I said everything that there is, but I again like you do need to when you get to that stage where you can't do it all then you do need to find I think it, it's that's the magic to find the right people to support you um, and not to make more work for you but to to support to do what you want to do I mean we've it's funny that Jennifer has her son there because I have three or had three at home and they've all come through the business you know all the kids in the summer come it's a party they put their music on which is terrible um i mean they're in their 20s but um and some have been coming since they were like 10 11 12 pressing bath bombs wrapping bath bombs so it, it, it is fun to have your kids around um, and it's fun to have other kids around. It's just the conversation's totally different. So it's it's fun. But yeah, I, I just think you need to find the right people. And that's the hardest, really the hardest um, thing to do when you when you need to grow, when you want to grow. Definitely. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think we even covered uh, connection here, finding the right people to, to work with and and everything so thanks guys just for for sharing uh everything the behind the scenes uh of your passion project of your life so really appreciate that if we can just maybe move to the community i think understanding a bit more uh before we start wrapping up understanding a bit more about the power of community not only in scaling your business but uh maintaining your mental health maintaining your physical health maintaining this motivation we know this is not a sprint this is a marathon so um what advice would you have for other small business owners in this call uh about how to run their businesses and operate like uh expansion in a healthy way along the many years that we know it takes so i would like to start <laughs> um i think like for us, the most important is to talk, to talk not only between us, me and Lizzie, but also to talk out to the community. Any, any advice, and you need to know how to sieve through it because there's so much out there, but any community that you can hook into, at least at the beginning, hook into. If after a while they're only talking about things that don't, touch you then you can remove yourself from that group but that you need that support you need that community if it's lessons if it's technical things if it's oh my god i haven't made a sale in a day oh panic panic it's okay like put it out there people will say you know what it's a week before mother's day people are waiting another week so they can send it in on first of may or like i i'm in groups also in england so they're like going like oh my god i got this and the customs did that it helps you understand what's going out there you're not alone um i mean we were talking yesterday about doing like a like an academy or like a university or like a, anything that you can i mean i go to sleep with my airpods in listening to lectures about marketing to listen about lectures about excel files to listen about lectures about anything anything that i use on a daily basis i i need to learn all the time the fact that mm -hmm. i know how to do excel really really well i still listen i still learn i still look i still bookkeeping alexa said the worst nightmare of my world 
I overcame it this year. The uh, nightmare, 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 <laughs> nightmare. So QuickBooks, great, easy when we were small business. No, we can't. So learning all that and taxes and donations and how to get to the right place and what can be expensed and what can't be expensed. I mean, there's so much out there. So any information that you can get, get on. Get on sellers, um, uh, uh, Facebook uh, groups, get on TikToks, get, communicate with other makers. There's enough out there. There's no reason to be jealous. There's no reason to say like, oh, I'm not telling them about my business. No, tell people, because if you tell, someone will tell you and they might have an idea. You might be able to collaborate. You don't both need to do the same thing. There's so much out there. So my biggest tip is listen, talk, collaborate. I would have to say the same thing. Um, definitely um, pretty much parroting what Alex said. Um, listen, talk, communicate, and collaborate. Um, we have so many partners and have made so many relationships um, just from our other small businesses that we've sort of grown up around too. Um, we really grew up in the farmer's market world. That was where, you know, I first started selling our products. And um, I have relationships with um, our farmers that grow the produce that we use, that grow the herbs and things that we've used. And I've been working with them from the start. So I have relationships that are over 18 years old and they've grown with us. And they definitely, um, it's important to sort of have that backbone and connection with not just people in your niche, but other businesses in your community. One is somebody else that you can talk to and sort of, you know, safely vent out or throw ideas out there because you never know what connections you're going to make with it. Um, whether it's you're talking to somebody about, you know, this particular product and like, hey, well, I'm doing a gift box set or, you know, a, a swag giveaway set or something like that. And, you know, you figure out that these would be great par products to partner up together. And then, you know, if you hadn't talked to somebody or if you weren't making those relationships, that's an avenue that you completely missed. Um, so you really don't know who you're talking to. Um, so just keep talking. <laughs> Definitely. I think there's some great advice there. And, oh. <laughs> um, I would like to add something. Please. Um, don't go in lightheaded, meaning do your homework, research, do your research. When somebody approaches you, you know, that can be a scammer. If your product is good, people want to sell your product and they scam you out of your product. They try to scam you out of the product if it's a scammer and they are getting pretty tricky these days, I tell you. So yes, do your homework, look for reviews, um, talk with other makers if you have been, if they have been approached, you know, look for uh, groups on Facebook, maker groups on Facebook in your uh, expertise, what you're making, if you do jewelry or if you uh, do pottery or soaps, you may soap making, there are groups on Facebook that you can join and where you can find advice, you know, and um, they can uh, uh, point you in the right direction. And because um, being scammed is not fun. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this, but you know, it happens to the best of us. So keep your eyes open and do your homework. Definitely. I think that's really great advice as well. You've got to kind of keep your eyes and ears open. It's, it's so much easier on the internet to be, to be misled. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. We are running out of time. But, I, but for anyone who does have a question, please reach out uh, either to joao at creeway.com or lauren at creeway.com and we'll answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you very much to our panel. Uh, all of you guys, thank you so much. You've been amazing. And uh, for everyone watching, you can find uh, Lizou, Chevolf, and Alexa Martha Designs uh, on Crewit. Uh, 
uh, we're currently running um, a US uh, brands only uh, shopping event until tomorrow uh, with exclusive discounts. So please check that out. Uh, we'll also be running a UK only brands event next week uh, with a special webinar as well uh, happening on, on uh, Thursday. Um, I believe it's Thursday and please uh, tune in. We'll, we'll send uh, some emails uh, updating you of that when we get closer to, to the date. Uh, but first of all, thank you so much. And uh, please check out the recording of this webinar as well and share it with, you, uh, with your friends and your colleagues. Uh, we're going to be posting it on YouTube in the next couple of days. So again, thank you so much and hope you all have a great day and evening wherever you are in the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.